Jumping into the number 5 spot of the best budget gaming TVs for the PS5 is the Sony X85K, coming in at a $898 price tag for the 65 inch variant. If you want to check out any of the 5 TVs in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's talk about it. This is definitely not the cheapest and most budget TV on the list, but it does everything exactly how you want it to. But the reason it's at the number five is it's just not the best value proposition, but it's still a solid TV for the price. Okay, it says four HDMIs with two of those being HDMI 2.1, going up to 4K at 120 Hertz, with one of those 2.1s being an eARC. Then you get two USBs, an optical audio out, ethernet, cable, and then an IR in. As for gaming performance, this natively hits 120 hertz at 4K with variable refresh rate and HDR, and this has superbly low input lag, as do all the TVs on this list, with ALLM, which is auto low latency mode. Now for ghosting, this does really, really well without much noticeable ghosting at all. There is some slight inverse ghosting, but during gameplay, it's pretty hard to notice, especially to the untrained eye. It's pretty much on par with the number one spot being slightly behind the number three spot, which is an IPS panel. Overall, gaming performance here is very impressive. It's just not the best value proposition, which is why it's in the number five spot. Still, if it's on sale and you want a great gaming experience, it's hard to go wrong with this. It's not like you're not gonna enjoy it. It's great. Now let's talk compatibility with the X85. K. Firstly, this can do 4K at 120 hertz with variable refresh rate and HDR on at the same time on a PS5, as well as 1080p at 120 hertz and HDR and variable refresh rate, but this does not support a 1440p 120 hertz resolution. Go figure. Now, as for the panel type, this is a VA panel. SDR brightness here is good. It's bright enough to keep away most reflections and make the image pop, but when compared to the number three, two, and number one spot, this is slightly dimmer. HDR brightness here is okay, peaking at about 540 nits across the board, which is full screen brightness, but that also includes highlights. And while 540 nits here is nothing to scoff at, that is a very good brightness, it's nice and vibrant, the highlights here don't pop out of the screen. So everything is kind of a similar brightness. So the HDR experience, while it's nice and bright and vibrant, you get good colors, those highlights just don't make it as dynamic as some of the others on the list. Now let's talk colors. As far as out of the box accuracy, while not perfect, the color temperature out of the box was pretty dang close to a 6,500 Kelvin target. It's a very polished panel, but a bit expensive for the features you get when compared to the other TVs on the list. But now let's talk contrast ratio and local dimming. This has no local dimming, but this does have a good contrast ratio of 7,500 to one. So the blacks are good, but just not as inky black as some of the others on the list, but still far better than a native contrast ratio of an IPS based panel. Now the flip side of that is there's basically no bloom, like white text on subtitles, no bloom. Black uniformity here is great, so there's no problems with that. There's really no problems at all with this TV. It's just not as super competitive with pricing that might change with sales. So definitely check the links below, see if it's on sale, if this is something you want. And lastly, to finish it up for the OS, this is using Google TV. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot. And this is the TCL Q6, coming in at a $699.99 price tag for the 65 inch variant. Although again, this does go on sale pretty consistently, so check the links below. Now for the ports, this has three HDMIs with all of them being 2.0, which don't worry, you're still gonna be able to do 120 hertz. This has some tricks up its sleeve. This then has one USB type A, an ethernet, cable, optical audio, composite in, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone. But now let's talk about that game reform. So yes, this natively hits 60 hertz, but wait, this uses resolution halving to get 1440p and 1080p resolutions at a 120 hertz refresh rate. And yeah, it's like a legitimate 120 hertz. Visually, it's buttery smooth. The input lag is better here. So yeah, you're literally able to do 1440p gaming at that high refresh rate. If you wanna do 4K, you can still do it at 60 hertz, making this a very, very attractive option for people that still wanna keep that budget low but you still want 120 hertz. It's kind of best of both worlds. Now, ghosting is definitely the worst on the list, but I think for most of you, it should not be a deal breaker. In bright scenes, there's essentially no ghosting. It's very, very not noticeable. It's only really in those much, much darker scenes that you're gonna get some red and green ghosting or color separation and some artifacting, things like that. In the darker scenes, it is noticeable. And if that's really going to bother you, you might wanna look at a different TV. But for me, for the price tag, plus getting 120 hertz, it's still for sure worth it. Now, for compatibility, this can obviously do 4K at 60 hertz, 1440p at 120 hertz, and 1080p at 120 hertz, all of those with variable refresh rate and HDR on. So the only thing you're not getting here is 4K at 120 hertz. That's it. Now for the panel type here, this is a VA panel. So you have a great native contrast ratio, but not great viewing angles. 
Brightness and SDR very consistently hit just shy of 500 nits. This is bright enough to make this a very enjoyable watching or gaming experience in brighter rooms. The highlights don't pop as much as others on the list. And HDR is really the same story here as it gets nice and bright, but those highlights don't pop out of the screen. So it's very similar to the Sony in that regard. Now, unlike all of the others on the list, colors out of the box were undersaturated and the gamma was too high. Although when you adjust this in the settings, the picture looks great with vibrant colors and the gamma does really affect the contrast, visual contrast. Uh, so it does look much better after just going to the picture settings just on the TV, super easy to adjust, increase that saturation a little bit, switch out your gamma and you're pretty much good to go. Now for contrast ratio and local dimming, this doesn't have any local dimming, but it has a very good contrast ratio of 8,000 to one. So you still get deeper blacks, um, far better than an IPS panel, but not as good as others like in the three, two, and especially number one spot. But again, here, we don't have any problems with blooming. Black uniformity is good. There's no local dimming to uh, affect that. So yeah, that's all great. Now for the OS, this uses Google TV, but with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which is the Vizio Quantum Pro, coming in at a $699 price tag for a 65 inch variant. Ports here are honestly just okay. This has four HDMIs with three of them being 2.0 and only one of those being 2.0. One. Then you have one USB type A, an optical audio, cable, and ethernet. You get no 3.5 millimeter connection here. And again, only one 2.1 port. But let's talk gaming. Firstly, this natively hits 120 Hertz at 4K and has very low refresh rate and extremely low input lag like all of the other TVs on this list. On top of that, this has extremely low ghosting. Also the lowest on the list. This is because this is an IPS based panel. And because of that, again, this also has the best viewing angles. So viewing angles are great. If you are a person that typically wants to have a bunch of friends over, play some split screen stuff, whatever. Or if you just have a lot of viewing from pretty extreme angles, this might be a great option. For compatibility, this is fully compatible with the PS5 at 4K, 120 Hertz, HDR, and variable refresh rate on all at the same time. This can also do 1080p at 120 Hertz with HDR and variable refresh rate, but this cannot do 1440p at 120 Hertz at all. Now let's talk about the panel itself. Like I said, this is an IPS base panel with a quantum dot layer, which increases that color gamut over the two previous TVs. And because this is an IPS panel, you're not gonna get as deep of inky blacks natively, but this does have full array local dimming, which does make it about twice the previous contrast ratio of those TVs, about twice the contrast ratio there, even on an IPS panel, so that's very good. Brightness and SDR here is a step up, hitting over 600 nits in full screen brightness with highlights hitting just shy of 1,000 nits. This is fantastic for keeping reflections away. HDR performance here is also very good, hitting 570 nits of full screen brightness and up to about 900 nits in the highlights, which is on par with the number two and one spot. As for colors, while this is not perfectly calibrated out of the box, it's not wildly off at all. The big thing here is the very wide color gamut, which is something you're gonna notice immediately. The colors on this are absolutely beautiful, especially when playing games in HDR, it's absolutely stunning. An IPS base panel almost always visually looks better in terms of colors than a VA panel. Now the VA panels don't look absolutely stunning, especially the number two and one spot are beautiful, but yeah, the colors on this are special. Now contrast ratio and local dimming. Firstly, this gets like a contrast ratio of 1600 to one. So terrible natively, but this has full array local dimming, which brings out to about 15,000 to one. So that's very, very good. You get much deeper, inkier blacks when compared to the two previous TVs and for an IPS panel, that's very, very good and pretty much a must, honestly. Now for the OS, that's the only real con with this TV. It uses Vizio's own OS, which is just kind of outdated. It still has pretty much everything you want on there, but again, not too big of a deal because you're probably gonna be using this with your console most of the time anyway. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which is the Hisense U7K, coming in at a $1,049.99 price tag for the 65 inch variant, but this is consistently on sale. Like I got mine for under 800 bucks, so definitely check the links below to see if it's on sale. Ports here are great, having two HDMI 2.1s and then two more HDMI 2.0s. You have two USB type A's, an optical audio out, a 3.5 millimeter audio out, and then a cable port, ethernet, and a composite in. Now as for gaming performance, as you expect, this natively hits 120 hertz. This has Freezing Premium Pro, which means HDR and variable refresh rate on at the same time. And again, this has extremely low input lag with ALLM. And as for ghosting, while this does have more than the Vizio and the number one spot, it's still significantly better than the TCL Q6, and it shouldn't really be a deal breaker in my opinion. 
it really only is noticeable in those darker scenes, those darker areas of gameplay. If you're in bright scenes, it's not really noticeable, but significantly better, significantly better than the TCL Q6. For compatibility with the PS5, this is fully compatible with 4K, 120 Hertz, variable refresh rate, and HDR on at the same time. This can also do 1440p, 120 Hertz, and 1080p, 120 Hertz, with both of those having variable refresh rate and HDR on. So fully compatible. There's literally nothing you can't do, which is great. As for the panel type here, this is a mini LED lit VA panel with a quantum dot layer, which is what Hisense calls ULED. Now, because of those mini LEDs, the brightness here is very good. In SDR, this is hitting up to 700 nits of brightness, but full screen brightness here is around 500 to 600 nits of brightness, which is very good. Brightness in HDR here is fantastic and a bit brighter than Vizio's hitting all the way up to its 1000 nit rating, but real full screen brightness will be around 650 nits, which is still very, very good. This makes the image very vibrant and beautiful. Colors here as expected are great. They're vibrant and the accuracy out of the box is quite good here. The best on the list and this is factory calibrated. So yeah, if you're really big on colors being accurate, this one's definitely gonna be the most accurate on the list. Now let's talk local dimming and contrast ratio. Firstly, with local dimming set to anything but high, it doesn't really work that well. So set it to high and leave it because that's how you should do it. This is the most precise local dimming on the list and the most zones out of any of the TVs by far. I think this goes up to either 1200 or 1600 local dimming zones at that biggest size. Now with local dimming set to high, this brings the contrast ratio to 45,000 to one. So you get much deeper inkier blacks and for gaming, it's coming on all the time because of the vast amount of zones and being mini LED lit, it really has that very quick and fast response for fast paced gaming. So no problems here at all. It's a beautiful TV. For the OS, this is using Google TV, which I think is the best in the industry right now. But with that, let's move on to the number one best budget gaming TV for the PS5. This is the TCL Q7, coming in at a $999.99 price tag or a 65 inch variant. But do keep in mind, prices do fluctuate, sales go on sale, so check the links below. For the ports, this has two HDMI 2.1s, two more HDMI 2.0s, with one of those being eARC, an ethernet, cable, USB type A 2.0, AV in, and a 3.5 millimeter audio out, then an optical audio out. Now for gaming performance, this obviously hits 4K at 120 Hertz natively. And again, to do the extremely low input lag, this feels amazing to game on the PS5. Ghosting is very good and definitely a step above the Hisense, although not quite as good as the Vizio, but really I'm splitting hairs here. It's very, very good. Ghosting should not be an issue at all on this TV. Overall, game performance honestly blew me away here. The image is incredibly beautiful. The local dimming is snappy even in games. Colors are beautiful. Input lag is superbly low and there's very little ghosting. And obviously you get that 120 Hertz at 4K. There's nothing wrong with this TV. It's beautiful and it's awesome to game on. Now this has full support with the PS5 with very low refresh rate, HDR on at full 4K at 120 Hertz. And again, this can also do 1440p and 1080p at 120 Hertz, very low refresh rate and HDR. So full compatibility, there's nothing that you can't do. For the panel type here, this is a QLED, which means this is a VA panel with full array local dimming and a quantum dot layer to increase that color coverage. Brightness here is great, hitting around 550 nits in full screen brightness. In those highlights, this can go as high as 900 nits. And again, remember that 900 nits in the highlights is in SDR, we're not even in HDR. And I think that's why this TV's picture just stands out from the others on the list. It is absolutely beautiful. This keeps away reflections and maintains a very vibrant and beautiful picture throughout the day's lighting. Even if you're in like a brighter room or if you have overhead lights, it's still gonna be great. In HDR, bright colorful scenes look especially awesome on this TV. And in game mode, the display gets a little bit brighter while less accurate, gets a little bit brighter, which is really the move for gaming. It's pretty, it's not perfectly accurate, but do we need that in games? Colors like on the Vizio and the Hisense are absolutely awesome due to that quantum dot layer. But let's talk about the black level and local dimming. Firstly, this has full array local dimming, like I said, but with it set to high, this brings the contrast ratio to a whopping 80,000 to one, which I believe might be the best contrast ratio in the industry right now at this price point. That is a super deep, inky, black, beautiful goodness. The beauty of the panel, because of that super deep contrast ratio, bright highlights, those thousand nit highlights, plus an overall very bright panel, especially in HDR, the wide color gamut, it just puts everything together and makes for an absolutely stunning panel. Now to wrap that up, this uses Google TV and the remote does have backlighting on it that's motion sensed, which is very, very nice. I love that. But overall, a fantastic TV. But again, if you want to check out any of the five TVs in this video, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links. But this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.